gospel of the Lord according to St. Mark, chapter 16, verses to begin at 1. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, has already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, that is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. They you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. For the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Let us pray. Our loving Lord, as we meditate upon your word, Open our eyes and hearts and ears so that your word may dwell in us and so that we become your witnesses. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Greetings to you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May the good Lord, the risen Lord, bless you all and keep you all in goodness and wellness and peace. Happy Easter to you all. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. It is so joyous to, um, to have this wonderful morning service here and to have you all here uh, worshipping together our risen Lord. May the good Lord bless you. And it is so nice to have little children in our midst. So a special welcome to all the little children in our midst. Happy Easter to you all. Happy Easter. Thank you. Oh, yes. Why don't we give them a round of applause? That's lovely. A special welcome to all our friends who are join, join uh, for this morning worship service for the first time. Welcome to our church, and we are so happy with your presence this morning. God bless you all. And for today's meditation, I was thinking about how I could prepare myself for this Easter morning, and also what I can preach about. And things were not that good in the past few weeks. <laughs> like me, uh, some of us, or many of us, all of us have been troubled with all the break-ins that happen. I was really disturbed and troubled how I'm going to prepare this sermon. Because I want this scripture to speak to me first when I prepare, and then I grasp it, and I digest it, and I take it inside so that I can deliver it to you all. While I was preparing, I was going through one of the interviews of uh, N.T. Wright, who was uh, a former bishop in the Church of England, who is also a profound and well-known New Testament scholar. So he was interviewed about Easter. So what, according to you, is Easter? Or he was asked to give insights about Easter. And he said the following likewise. The Easter stories from the Gospel accounts from which people got the wrong end of the stick. What he meant by it was, uh, in the John's Gospel, on, uh, in the Gospel accounts we see, when the women, when the women went to the tomb uh, to keep the spices, Jesus was not found there. The tomb was empty, and they were confused. And Mary said, probably Jesus was stolen. His body was stolen by someone. So they did not understand he raised from the dead and they could not actually grasp what actually happened that time. 
And when Peter and other disciples, when they ran, in John's Gospel we read, uh, when they found the linen cloth um, which was wrapped around Jesus' body but was now kept aside where he was laid, he still couldn't understand or grasp what it is. He came back to the folk, for his folk, uh, disciples and told them, see, I found uh, the linen being lying there. He couldn't speak beyond. He couldn't explain to them what actually happened there. He only could say, I could not see Jesus there any longer. And then when Jesus appeared to Mary, she thought he was a gardener. She couldn't believe or she couldn't find Jesus in that person because she, she still couldn't uh, understand what was going on there. So nobody was able to understand on the Easter day what really happened. And N.T. Wright, he tries to tell this. It is the same thing, Easter to us sometimes, or even after 2,000 years, it is still, it has mysterious truths we cannot grasp, we cannot understand, we cannot um, try to tell it to the world, this is exactly what it is. So he, try, he goes on to explain, saying that this is how, looks like how a man um, or someone who tries to, take the sea or the ocean and trying to contain it into a bottle, a small bottle of water, a small water bottle. Like how it cannot be contained, the Easter story, the Easter truth or truth or the, the reality of resurrection cannot be contained by human minds, cannot be contained with the human understandings. He goes on to say, um, to quote or mention some agnostic, one agnostic scholar uh, whose name he didn't mention, but he says, this agnostic scholar tries to explain, those disciples on the, di on the Easter day, they were struggling to tell or struggling to describe what happened because they could not find it in their language or in their words. It was limited to them, so they were struggling to understand what really happened on the Easter day. Which means Easter is a mystery even today. Christ's resurrection cannot be explained. It, it is somehow beyond our human minds in a way, but still it needs to be explained to our human senses. But the truth is, death could not contain him. And death is not an end, and there is nothing called as an end. There is always something which has to move forward, go beyond. And Jesus' resurrection tells us that life is there beyond death. And Jesus has conquered this death. And now coming to Mark's gospel, uh, you might have seen there was John's gospel put, last minute I changed it to Mark's gospel um, for some reasons. Um, and Mark's gospel we find the, the story, the narration of uh, resurrection. In other gospel accounts we find Jesus meeting with the disciples. He was interacting with the disciples. Like I said before, um, in Luke's gospel, Jesus was traveling to Emmaus, going along with the disciples, explaining to them, and then having a meal with them. In John's gospel, we find uh, he's encountering, uh, he's meeting with Mary Magdalene, and then with the disciples who were uh, scared and who were hiding behind the closed doors of the upper room. And then also he met them, um, he showed them his wounds and asked Thomas to place his fingers on the wounds of the nail so that he might believe. Mark is not giving any proof of resurrection, but he has got something special. Like Mark's gospel is so small of all the gospels, of the four gospels, his message is also so precise. He's not taking much time to explain how Jesus was born. He's also not taking much time how Jesus was resurrected or what happened afterwards, but he's got a message. There is a gospel to inform from the Mark's gospel of resurrection account. And it is, he tells, go, do not be alarmed. Go and tell your fellow disciples, tell other disciples, Jesus is going ahead to Galilee. So the message is, Jesus is going ahead of you. When we read the Mark's gospel in the beginning, we find after Jesus invites people to repent and repent the kingdom of God is at hand. Then he chooses his disciples where we find Jesus tells the disciples, follow me. Mark chapter eight, 
Jesus also urges people, his disciples and everyone, if you want to be my disciple, deny yourself, take up your own cross and then follow me. And in this resurrection account here, the angel told the disciples or the women who went there, Jesus is already going ahead of you, which means he's going ahead and you have to simply follow him. The message is follow him. Jesus is not waiting in the sense because he was dead, he has not halted. He has not stopped what he was doing before. He started doing his work again. And it says, he has gone ahead of you to meet you in Galilee. If we look into Mark's gospel again, a majority of the portion can be attributed to Jesus' ministry in Galilee. And it is where he also called the disciples to become his disciples. So he invites them back again to Galilee, which means this is where I found you. This is where you found your new life. This is where you found your new calling. And now I'm going ahead of you to Galilee. You come there and join with me. It means start your ministry. Don't stop yourself. Like how we read in John's gospel, they were hiding behind the closed doors and they were also perplexed, scared, did not know what to do. Finally, one disciple told, oh, okay, it's, it's not good that we are sitting always inside the door. I, I'm going to go and do fishing. But here, Mark says, Jesus is ahead of you and he's already gone to Galilee. So you pack yourself and get ready to go to Galilee. Mark's gospel invites us to be the Easter community, the Easter people, the people of the risen Lord, who is ready ahead of us. Like I was perplexed, like I was disturbed, and I really did not know how I'm going to prepare someone for today, how I was going to preach. I was disturbed, I was distressed, but the message to me was, Jesus is already ahead of you. You don't sit idle, Get up and go. Jesus is going ahead of you. You just follow him. If you are troubled, if you are struggling, if you are distressed, if you are worried of anything, he doesn't say don't worry. He just says, I'm going ahead of you. To me, he's going to prepare the way for me. To me, he's not only with me, he's already prepared of what I am experiencing, and he's going to prepare the way for me so that he can lead me. And Jesus is going to lead me. The risen Lord is going to lead me. The risen Lord is going to lead us all. The risen Lord is going to lead you and me. So with whatever situation we have come this morning, the Easter message for us is, I believe, the risen Lord is going ahead of us. And whatever worries that we, we may have, whatever struggles that we may have, let's not think about it. We have a hope, a word of assurance. The risen Lord is going ahead of us. He is leading the way for us and we are just called to follow him. Shall we follow him? He is leading the way for us. Shall we put aside our worries and struggles and everything? Shall we just follow this risen Lord? May the risen Lord lead us. May the risen Lord guide us. May he be our strength. May he be our light. This morning we had a wonderful early morning light service from the darkness to dawn, from the darkness to light, to brightness. And Jesus is going to be our light. Jesus is going to show us the way he's going to lead us where we should go. And let us trust him and submit ourselves into his hands, into this risen, lamb, risen Lord. And he's calling us once again to start the new mission after his resurrection. Shall we join with him and go behind him and follow him. May the risen Lord bless you all and keep you all in goodness and wellness and peace. Amen. Shall we pause for a while and ponder upon the words that we just heard?